Hey guys, welcome to part one of the automated greenhouse build. This is a project that I have to do for part of my diploma at TAFE and I chose to do this greenhouse as a way to show my skill with microcontrollers. I decided I would include an existing solar panel setup that I had from running some pool lights at my old house in Kalgoorlie. The second part of this series will show that setup in more detail. The solar will be the power supply for this setup. Uh, with the idea being that it's pretty much self-sufficient and can run itself. Once I decided on what parts I need, I went to Bunnings and I bought some seeds, tomatoes, lettuce, beans and spinach, some stakes for the sprayers, some air vents with a bug shield, some 4mm flexible tube with the adapters and fittings, plastic builder's film, some pots and some potting mix, and some lengths of dressed pine. I went back a couple times to get more. Some of the pieces of pine were pretty long, so I decided to set up outside and I just used my saw horses and an old bit of wood to make a little table. Um, and then I could put my drop saw on top of that. And then I could measure and cut my pieces. I kind of just winged the measurements as I went. Um, and hence I had to go out to Bunnings a couple of times for some other pieces of wood but in the end it turned out pretty nice. And I used a little off cut of wood as a drilling template to help me line up the holes where I wanted to screw the pieces together. This is how the template's used and using it I can duplicate exactly where the holes are for each piece of wood which really helps when you're lining up the frames. So I basically made two sort of square frames at the end with uh, the two vertical pieces having a 20 degree mitre at the end of the piece of wood and obviously one side was longer to account for that slope. And when I was screwing the two pieces together it really really helped having some uh, clamps there to hold them together and I'm specifically trying to sink the screws a little bit below the surface of the wood um, so I can cover them up with plaster later on. And there you can see what I mean about sinking the screws in. And those are the frames that I ended up with. So you can see the 20 degree slope between the two pieces. Now I can screw the two end frames together with the longer length pieces. And that's basically the frame complete minus the lid. And again, it really, really helped having those clamps to hold the frame together while I was screwing it. It would have been a whole lot easier with a second person, but I was by myself, so the clamps were a good compromise. Here I'm just eyeballing where I want the vents to go. Uh, the idea being that I'll use what's called convection. Cold air will be sucked in through these vents and the PC fans on the other end of the greenhouse will be an exhaust fan and will blow out hot air from the top of the greenhouse. So those horizontal pieces of wood are what I could screw the vents to. And the process continued on the other end where I could mount the PC fans. I used some plaster to cover over the screw holes. My brother-in-law John came to visit so he was able to give me a hand uh, putting the lid together and we just measured up and kind of approximated the size that would work for what hinges we had and it turned out pretty nice. Initially we tried some old cupboard hinges that were sort of spring closed uh, but they just didn't work out very nice and they didn't sit very flush so we changed it to butt hinges and it worked very well after that. And then it was lots of sanding 
and John gave me a hand painting as well and we just decided to paint it white pretty much because that was the paint that I had lying around anyway. So if you're watching this John, thank you brother, that was a really big help. I also bought some cheap handles, I think they're about $1.50 each and it's just going to aid in lifting the greenhouse structure and moving it around the yard. With the paint dry and some touch-ups just being applied, I could put the vents on and also mount the PC fans. And then I could apply the plastic builder's film and I just basically lay the pieces over the top of the frame and I used some screws just to hold it on and I made sure I was cutting off the logo. This was a really, really time consuming process. Um, I just had to make sure that I was making an allowance for the fans and for the vents so I had to cut out the plastic behind those items. Onto the watering setup, basically I want a single input line which is initially just powered off a hose fitting um, but eventually I've got, I've got some 12 volt DC water pumps coming and I'll connect them up to those and I want the line to split off uh, five times for each of the two pot plants and they've got a, a valve there that can control the pressure to each of those two sprayers. So off the five T-section splits I've got uh, the valve controls there and at the far end I've got a little plug to terminate one of the hoses. In the future if I wanted to add extra water in or an extra pump I could either feed in the pump from that one side or add on extra sprayers going from that last T-section. And there I'm just using the pot plants to measure out the length of the sprayers and I've actually only put on five sprayers at the far end because I've ran out of hose so I'm going to have to buy some more hose and make the rest off. So that's a temporary setup with a standard hose adapter. And this is the first test just using the garden hose. Uh, obviously a little bit too much pressure. Um, but these 12 volt DC pumps that are coming, I think they're rated for 240 litres per hour. Um, I don't know what that equates to in PSI or even how it compares to the garden hose yet. I'll just have to wait and see and, and test it when they arrive. Now I can set up my pots and fill them with the potting mix and then I'm not much of a gardener so I'm just sort of poking holes in the soil with my finger and pouring some of the seeds in and I realise maybe that the pots probably aren't the right type of pots for some of the plants I'm growing but this uh, project's really more about the microcontroller side of it so I'm just, you know, if it grows, it grows, if it doesn't, well, too bad. And again, I've got two types of tomatoes. I've got some snow peas, some spinach leaf, and mesclun, some sort of salad mix. I think there's about three different types of lettuce there. So surely something will grow. Now I'm just attaching the spray nozzles to the stakes. And this is just a temporary location. I was kind of hoping that the spray from each of those nozzles would cover two plants until I can buy more hose, but um, as you'll see in the test a little bit further on, it, it doesn't quite, so likely I'll centre those stakes on each pot plant and I'll cable tie off the pipe onto those stakes. The first test with the pot plants in. And that's where we'll leave part one of this greenhouse build. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and look forward to the next one which should be coming soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe.